continue, and uh, in, the, in this example, we just look at uh, how the magnetic field changed when the current was a constant value. But let's assume for a moment that we have a similar situation, but J is not constant, but let's consider that uh, J is equal to K R squared. So, and again, given this, we we'll define this. So, we have the first regime when, uh, when R it is smaller than B, and if R is smaller than B, we need to uh, define, we need to write this B times 2 pi R, this is equal to, to mu zero times I prime. And uh, we need to determine what is the current up to radius R, which would be the integral of JDS, and JDS, again, for cylindrical symmetries, DS is always equal to 2 pi r dr. So it is this inner parameter times the thickness, and the language that we often choose is the following. We say the following, at radius r equal to r, pick uh, an element uh, dr. So, at this distance, we're just selecting, uh, this is a thickness, you can also add this uh, statement. So, we're just going to integrate JDS, and uh, this one, the i, is going to be equal to j times 2 pi r dr, the integral is from 0 to r, where i is smaller than b, and this is equal to uh, k r squared times 2 pi r dr, the constants are 2 pi k, r cubed dr, and uh, this is simply going to be equal to r to the power 4 divided by 4, right? So this is, we know how we give this expression, and uh, we get here pi k over 2 uh, times r to the power 4. So this is the curve, and uh, Finally, we can say here this is equal to mu zero pi k r to the power four divided by two. So then the magnetic field is equal to. So we just need to divide pi with pi two. This is uh, also when r is gone. So this is equal to mu zero k over four times r to the power three. So this is what we observe. So it looks like the magnetic field is increasing very fast as a function of radius when we start from the from r zero to r b. In the previous case, it was uh, it was a, a linear increase of the b as a function of r, if you remember it. But this one, it looks like it's a kr cube. Now, this is the case when we are inside the conductor. If we pick, if we, uh, if you want to find the magnetic field when r is larger than b, then we are going to have the following: b times two pi r. This is going to be equal to mu zero times. So in this integral, we just need to set r equal to b. And uh, let's do this. When r is equal to the outer radius b, this is going to be, sorry, this is pi k b to the power 4 divided by 2. So this is pi k b to the power 4 divided by 2. The pi's cancel out. The b is going to be equal to mu 0 k b to the power 4 divided by 4 times 1 over pi. So overall, the magnetic field, it is going to change like this. So up to the outer radius b, the magnetic field is increasing with r to the power 3. So this is going to increase very fast, proportional to r3. And uh, after this point, this is going to decrease with respect to 1 over, uh, 1 over r. Okay. 
Now let's move to Okay, so uh, when so let's say it this way. So we had a, before we had the charge Q, we found the potential P. We also found uh, electric field E. Then we found D. We could find the polarization and many other uh, field vector fields, which uh, we already know how uh, we found those. Now regarding the uh, when we find when you go from electrostatics to magnetostatics, now from J, we will have to find a vector A. We need to, so this is the vector potential. And actually, the need for the vector potential, it is fundamental, because since the divergence of the B is equal to zero, uh, if you remember, we used to have a relationship in the vector fields, which uh, which was like this. So this was a relationship which you can check on on chapter two. We had such a, an expression, but then today we learned that since we don't have a magnetic monopoles. The divergence of B, it should be equal to zero. Which, after we applied the, the vector properties for the divergence theorem, we learned that what this really means, this means that the flux of the magnetic field, Ds, was zero. Now, if this is true, so let's forget this expression here. If this is true, we can say that B can be written as a curl of some vector potential. Okay, so we call this one potential because uh, this dead operator, this is simply, what I will often, I often ask this question this way, Chinese years operatory dead. That's a lot of them. What is the unit of this? Siempre <laughs> The unit of this one is uh, one over meter. The Laplacian operator. So this is the Laplacian. Okay? Sorry, this is one over meter. The Laplacian. This is one over meter square. Why do we call this on the Laplacian? Because this was the Laplacian equation, right? So, so again, uh, the derivative of a potential it gives us the intensity. Similarly, this is the derivative of some potential. So we can, uh, to some degree, we can say that uh, if we have uh, a current density, of course, from this current density, we can determine some current i, general, sorry, uh, ampere per meter squared, ampere i, we can find the b. So we are using this uh, derivations like this. But at the same time, we can uh, also say that from j, from J, we can find the B, okay? At the same time, from Rho, we can find E. But uh, for these two different problems, we can use an intermediate way of uh, not finding the B from the J directly, but adding one more step. Adding one more step is the following. We find A, and from A, we find the B. In a similar way, from rho, we can find the potential B, and from the potential B, we find E. Now, the second approach, it is lower. We have uh, twice more operations, right? But it is very simple. 
So we are going to uh, select this option or this, uh, and uh, once you get up to the third year, you're going to see this a lot. Okay, so get ready for this. So uh, you should get ready for this. That whenever you have these sources for the fields, uh, we always it, it, will, it will always be easier if you find the A for the magnetic field and the potential, the scalar potential for the uh, electric field E. This is a vector potential, this is a scalar potential. You put it like this, like this, like this, like this, like this and that's all. So, uh, and then once we see this, uh, these two domains, the magnetostatics and the electrostatics, we have a duality relationship. This is also very important. Relation, so the duality relation, this just uh, states that if we, all the equations that we have for electrostatics, they are all valid for magnetostatics, it will be exactly the same expression, only that sometimes we have to change for whenever we see the permittivity, we may have to substitute it with one over the permeability. Okay, so these features, they are preserved in two different uh, domains. Now, why did we mention this one at this part? We mentioned this because when we had the Poisson equation for electrostatics, we had such an expression, such as the, the Laplacian of the potential V. This was equal to minus rho V divided by epsilon zero. Okay. So this was the, this is not a principle. This is the Laplacian operator. This is the Laplacian operator, but this is the whole thing is called the Poisson uh, equation. And uh, when we had this equation, the solution, it was equal to, so the solution of this system, it was the following. This was equal to k times the integral of rho dv over r. Okay. So this is what uh, we used to find. Now, in a similar situation, now we're going to have the and a similar that does it for the magnetic field, where uh, we'll have, so here we have the J, also this new zero J, and uh, on the other side, we can determine what is, so this V, it is a scalar potential, now we need to find a vector potential A, and this A, it can be represented as, let's put this one, AX, this is mu zero divided by four pi, four pi, integrating over Jx d volume divided by r. Uh, so for the moment, we did not derive the whole expression, but you can take it for granted just because we have this, uh, just because of duality relationships, they are respected. And now, so from this one, we see that Ax is equal to mu zero divided by four pi, Jx integrating over the volume divided by R, where R is the distance from the source, from the current source, to where we want to uh, do the measurement. Now, uh, now, similarly to this, we can also say that since we know that A is a vector potential, this can be expressed as Ax times Ax plus Ay times Ay. So we're simply we are decomposing this one onto three orthogonal directions, right? And now, if this can be decomposed this way, we can write the same equation for Ay is equal to mu zero divided by four pi times Jy. Okay, so we just put the current density which is pointing along the y direction. The az is also going to be the same way, u0 divided by 4 pi jz. So now, if you ask your friends in third year, including Andy, Andy Wenger, you'll immediately say, oh yeah, they are doing it right now when they're analyzing the antennas. So they have some current density. Whatever the current density direction is, they immediately get this a vector field in the same direction. Uh, for example, uh, the possible direction for the common density is the following, where j is equal to j times a phi. And what is this? This would be a loop. You can have a loop, which is carrying some currents. This is the direction of the j. 
immediately, what you can learn from here, you can say that the, the, the A5, the A, it will have a direction A5. What does A5 mean? This means that this will have a, uh, it will be a field which has some non-zero circularity, the same way that we use the right-hand rule uh, to find the respective vector field. Now, from this, uh, from this expression, the next one that we want to, to discuss is that uh, this flux, now this is just to help us to get some uh, intuition into the whole problem, or some aspect of it, so the flux is always equal to d dot uh, ds, and uh, instead of b, we can write here, so d is the curl of a, right, so this is the curl of a, integrating over ds, but we know that this looks like a Stokes theorem, right? The Stokes theorem is like the curl of some vector field. It's a mistake, it's in ds, this is meter squared, this should also be meter squared. So the curl, so the integral of a curl over some surface area, it should be equal to the integral of this vector field over some closed line. Okay? So these two are equal to each other, which it is interesting, but uh, the way to represent this one is the following. Let's assume that we have some, some contour that looks like this. And uh, we want to find the flux. What was the flux? It was always uh, some vector field taking the dot product with the surface area perpendicular. Because every surface area it is defined by uh, a vector which is perpendicular to this. So this is the vector here, this is the vector here, this is here, here. So this is how uh, we denote it. And uh, it looks like if we have some vector field which goes like this, so this is the B, B again, then the flux over the surface area is B times DS, and this is also equal to the line integral of this A. So if this is the A, so picking up this A and integrating like this, it is the same way as maybe it's better if you do it like this. Let's imagine for a moment that we have some vector field which is pointing out like this, this is the B. And let's call this one B is equal to B, AZ. Then, uh, what is the flux here? Flux is magnetic field times pi r squared. So this is, so flux is equal to B times pi r squared, that's good. But this, at the same time, is equal to the A integrating this one with D up. Okay, so this is the, the interpretation of this flux. Then, uh, what we can do next is that we are here. So, we are looking at, at this expression here, JD volume, and this is ampere divided by meter squared times meter cube, and uh, the volume, let's assume that if we have the volume of a conductor, we have the cross-sectional area times the length L, right? So what is the volume here? It's cross-sectional area times the length. So we can write this one as J times area times DL. <coughs> now, what is J times area? What is the unit of this one? Not here. Okay. So this is IDL. So that means that uh, if we integrate the current and DL, so the current is flowing this way, and DL is also following the same path. Okay, so if we simply kind of getting a, a dot product, we can also say that that expression of AX, we can also write it like this. AX is equal to mu zero I divided by four pi integrating dl over r. So this one might look like a relatively simpler expression. Okay, so uh, relatively simpler than this one because to some degree uh, integrating the current density over a volume, it might look like uh, confusing. But integrating over this dl element, it might look more uh, intuitive. Now, from here, 
We can have controlling. And we can get the, the expression which can be written as B is equal to mu zero i divided by four pi integrating PL cross uh, cross AR divided by R squared and uh, this is somehow uh, obtaining the analytical expression of the magnetic field from the current source to this. Uh, okay. Now let's see if there's one example. Example, but which one should we opt for? Uh, let's assume that we have a wire which has a length of 2L and this is extended in this way. This is the Z axis and uh, we need to find the magnetic field at some distance R. This is the point P and this point P minus uh, L. And uh, yeah, this is the question. Uh, how can we find the the B? Now, regarding this B, what we can do is that we can implement right away what is the what is this, this vector A. And uh, before we solve this one, let's also assume that. Uh, we have a wire. Wait a second. So maybe it's worth uh, noticing that the, the current, the current, it, it is pointing along the A set. So the current is moving up this way. And this is the z-axis, and uh, immediately we can uh, we can apply this uh, this equation. But also, in order to do this integrals, what we can uh, implement, we can use this terminology. We can say that at a height delta z, we can pick up an infinitesimally small uh, uh, element dz. And then we want to determine what is this DL. DL is in fact it is equal to DZ because it's pointing is that element with this direction. And uh, another notation that we can include here is that uh, uh, whenever we are going to integrate the, the the place where the charges flow, we can denote them as uh, Z prime. Because we can have also a normal set, which could be the distance between two different points. But 
this is just denoting that this is over the current. And by the way, we see here that uh, if the current is I equal to A times KZ, what can we say about the A at point P? This should also be like this. Okay. So A at this point, it should be like this. We don't know the magnitude, the direction, we found it. It's easy. It is pointing along the Z direction. For sure, once we know this AZ, then the next question would be how do we find the B? How do we find the B? B is going to be something like this AX, AY, AZ, right? Derivative with respect to X, derivative with respect to Y, derivative with respect to Z. This is 0, 0, AZ, right? So this is how we're going to find these. Now, it depends whether we're going to use the the Cartesi coordinate system or the cylindrical coordinate system. Using cylindrical coordinate system, it can be smarter. That means that we just go to the formula sheet or to the cheat sheet, we write this curl operator in the Cartesian coordinate system, so in the cylindrical, and not here. But just as a reminder, so once we find AZ, we just implement this. Okay? And since AZ, it is pointing along the Z, the B, it should point perpendicular to AZ, which is going to be uh, B is going to be on the plane X and Y. Okay. Or otherwise, if we are dealing, so if you have X, Y, Z, my previous statement is correct. If we use R, Phi, and Z, then we will say the following. If A is pointing along the AZ, then the B, it will have a projection along the AR and a projection along the uh, A Phi. Okay, let's, let's hold the head. So now A, it is, uh, so we found, we have to denote the Z, we need to denote also what is the distance R. This is R. So this is the Z, and this R, this is equal to R squared plus Z prime squared over squared over the square root. So we just need to integrate this expression and uh, we can use the table integrals because to me it does not look like a sim simple one where we can use the uh, substitution rules or unless it looks like this is going to be some uh, challenging one. But uh, after, if we use the table to uh, integrals, we find that this is going to be equal to mu zero i divided by 4 pi Plus square root z prime plus s square. Okay, so uh, let's move ahead. So z prime, it is where we consider the limit from plus l to, to minus l, and this is equal to. So this will be L plus This is the, the A. And then we need to determine the, the B. And uh, for this one, let's use the, the cylindrical uh, coordinate system. So we need to find the curl of A to find the B. And this one, uh, this will be equal to 1 over R. 
Times uh, AR, we have it here. Or you can better. Minus eighty five. Okay, so this is the expression that we can get from the, from the book or from the, from the, let's say, cheat sheet. Now, in all of these terms, we have, we'll have that the AR and A5 are both equal to zero. Are equal to zero AR and B five, that means that this is zero, this is zero, this is also zero, this is zero. Okay, and uh, so these two are different from zero, so we have AZ taking the derivative with respect to phi and uh, So then here is going to be equal to AR, uh, let's say where we can substitute this better, minus A5 delta AZ with respect to AR. The, so this is just a pair of magnetic field, which is B, will have a projection along the AR, which will be 1 over I delta AZ with phi minus A5 delta AZ as a function of R. Now, this is easy. We can take the derivative of this one with respect to r, but uh, with respect to phi, uh, we can also have a look at the, at the whole expression, and, uh, and we, can, we can have a look actually. Do we see an explicit dependency of the az as a function of phi? No. no. Now, asking this question is the same way as asking the following. If we have a wire that is carrying a column, apparently, let, let this be this column, but let, let's, let's take this away to this point. Now, would the magnetic field be any different here versus here? The direction? No, right? So, even the direction is the same, because if the current is AZ, here A will be AZ, here it will be still AZ. So there is no preference whether we are even this wire, actually, this wire, this is writing Schneider here, if I did it this way, it will not change the current. It doesn't matter whether we are on the right or the left, front or the back, which means that uh, because of this specific symmetry that this problem has, it does not depend whether the angle phi, so because phi is mean, meaning that we are taking along this, this side. So actually, this is equal to zero, so the derivative is equal to zero because of the symmetry, not that the z is zero. So finally, we can say that the, it looks like the magnetic field is going to be equal to minus A5 times this derivative of, of uh, AZ with respect to R. Okay. And uh, so then we can say that B is equal to minus A5 times, uh, so these are all constants. What is the derivative of ln x? ln x, the derivative is equal to 1 over x, right? Because the integral of 1 over x is ln x. 
So this whole thing, this is uh, equal to uh, times one over x. This is L squared plus R squared minus L. Uh, L squared plus R squared plus L. And then we have to take the derivative with respect to R of this uh, of these terms. And then this is the derivative of A divided by B. Derivative of A divided by B is equal to the derivative of A times B minus the derivative of B times A divided by B squared. Okay, so if we substitute also the derivatives here, we can find the complete expression for the B. Uh, okay. Do we have any question? Can I do it here? Which is a little bit Okay. Uh, you're showing the projection, looking at the same with your multi impact with the, with the chart. Can they put in a group of students in the Spanish channel? Mine? Yeah. 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 Ye